Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we're going to be honing out this Ford inline six engine block. Stay tuned. So in a previous video, we stripped this engine down to a bare block. And now it's time to hone and deglaze these cylinder walls. They're not in terrible condition. They're actually pretty decent. As you can see, we have some very light rust and there's some vertical scratches on the cylinder wall itself very very faint can't feel them with a nail but you can see them slightly you can have this done at a machine shop but it's definitely something that you can do at home these tools are really cheap to buy so this is a power built horn and deglazer i think it was about 20 30 pounds on amazon something like that you want to make sure the cylinder wall is as clean as possible before starting you want to clean it from the inside with a clean cloth and make sure that, that is perfectly clean and dry. You want to apply some oil to the inside of the cylinder wall. Typical 540, 1040, typical engine oil will be perfectly fine. Each of these are a 220 grit pad and you want to make sure that each is covered in fresh, clean oil. Once attached to the drill, quite simply hold it together, place it inside the cylinder, start your drill on a, a medium speed, kind of looking for a 45 degree angle hatching on the inside. If you put it in slowly, and pull it out faster the hatching will not match up just try and keep it consistent and that should work once you've done a few passes remove the honing tool clean up the cylinder wall with a fresh clean cloth and basically keep cleaning until the cloth itself comes out perfectly clean get yourself some lubricant wd-40 or even just some engine oil and just apply a light coating of engine oil on the cylinder wall that will prevent any flash rust and keep it clean for when it's ready to be reassembled you want to watch out for tapering. Now, basically, you want this cylinder wall to be even all the way down, or at least to cover the stroke. It doesn't necessarily matter if the bottom is out, as long as kind of midway to the top is even all the way down, that's what you're looking for. People tend to work the tool back and forwards, only on the top to wear down this lip. Once they've worn down the lip, they will then continue to do the whole cylinder. You will find you've created a taper, and the top of the cylinder wall is actually larger than the bottom or even the center. You will find then the piston rings will have to work much harder to expand and contract to match up with the actual distance of the cylinder wall from the top to the bottom. So let's get this out of the packaging, get this lubed up, get this cleaned and lubed up and get this cylinder horned and ready for use. So I have just put some fresh oil onto a clean cloth I'm basically just cleaning the wall of the cylinder to get the thick grime off, which looks like that. I'll keep doing this till the rag is pretty clean. That should be clean enough. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner already. That's just off two passes with some fresh, clean engine oil and that should be now ready to be horned. So this is the horner attached to the drill I'm gonna be using. And one thing to mention, as you can see the bottom of the cylinder, you do not wanna hit that by aligning that next to it. So for my measurements, I should be only putting the horn into the cylinder to about here. If I go past this, there's a good chance I will nick this at the bottom and you definitely don't wanna be doing that. So you just wanna apply some oil to all of these. And you want to do that to every one of them. And you also need to re-oil inside the cylinder wall. You want to make sure that this here is screwed all the way out. The further that is screwed in, the more pressure you will get from the cutting pads. You're basically just wanting to deglaze take off a very small amount just to allow the new rings to seat back into the cylinder walls. So I tend to have this all the way out and quite simply grab them together, place them on the inside, make sure it was on drill. You don't want to put it on any torque settings because it will catch and basically work it in and out as straight as possible. Get 
get yourself a bucket of hot soapy water and basically clean them off in the bucket of water. Get yourself a clean rag and clean off all that dirty oil and inspect to see what kind of cross hatching that you have and if you're happy you can call that one done and move on to the next one. So I'm pretty pleased with that it needs one more pass so I'll put some fresh oil on the cylinder wall some fresh oil on the pads and give it another 30 seconds or so and hopefully we can call this one done. So that is pretty good, it is not perfect, there is a slight faint scratch there and there's a tiny bit of pitting. I am unable to feel any imperfections in the cylinder, it is smooth and there is nothing protruding outwards and I'm not able to get a nail on that scratch so that should be fine. You want to try and be careful, you can get quite carried away with this and the idea is just to kind of deglaze take the smallest amount of material off you do not want to keep going and going and going and actually get to the point where you may have to get some different pistons or even slightly larger rings as you can see this was before so there is quite a nice transformation and that is after this block will probably need to go to a machine shop as I mentioned before there is some weld here which is a bit suspect because the bolt going into the head was rusty so think there's something going on inside of there with maybe one of the coolant passages might be leaking through the threads. I think this has been welded and re-tapped and I think whatever that fix was has basically cracked again and it needs to be refixed. For that reason I'm not that bothered about being getting these perfect as long as they're in, in a condition where I know they look pretty decent and if I had to they're in a usable condition. Should add if you have any scratches which are nail deep you can kind of feel quite rough really that should definitely go to a machine shop you definitely want to get this board maybe 10 over or even just go the full 30 over and get bigger pistons and rings with a 10 over you can usually get away with using the original pistons and rings but if you're going to go to a machine shop you may as well go for the 30 over and get the extra performance that you get from having that done since you're going to pay to get the 10 over anyway. So what I have done is insert a piston ring which came from this engine, used the piston to level it off using a feeler gauge, measure the distance between the end of the rings and then basically push the ring down. It doesn't have to go all the way down and measure once again when you get to the bottom and do the calculations and work out if the taper is still in spec. If it's way out I would take it to a machine shop and have them professionally realign your cylinder because you definitely don't want that out of spec. When you are measuring make sure you don't put the ring right at the top you definitely want to put it down especially below the witness mark. So I'm now going to go ahead and do the remaining five. I'll get back to you guys once I'm done and show you the finished results. So halfway through we have the first three done and we have three left remaining. We'll need going over once more definitely before reassembly but compared to this I think we can agree that is one hell of a difference. All six have been honed out and they're a pretty good standard. This isn't the final pass, but definitely one hell of an improvement. So the reason why this block is stripped down, if you guys haven't seen the previous video basically the piston was completely stuck it took quite a lot of effort to get the piston out of this cylinder I did not think this would come back and after just a few sharp passes it's pretty decent so to get these to this standard it took two to three passes basically deglazing the surface you are putting these cross hatches in just to aid the new pistons you are not trying to remove as much material as possible 
you would just want it so you'll have a nice smooth surface with some even cross hatching going across it. I was planning on going back over these one more pass and getting them almost to the final stage. However, the plan for this block is firstly, it'll probably need to go to a machine shop. You have a chunk of weld on the top. It is absolutely full of rust and the block really should be x-rayed because I'm not too sure if there's any damage deep down inside the threads. I do have some paint stripper and maybe a future video could be trying to get all this paint off and getting the, the block back to its natural state. That might be something fun to try. Also, regarding all this rust, I've had a heated pressure wash on this and got a lot out, but there's still a load left inside. An engine with this much rust, I would most certainly not rebuild. It would totally, it would destroy our radiator. It would destroy the thermostat. It would just be a waste of time. I like the idea of electrolysis. That looks like a bit of fun. Basically involves a big bath and some water and a battery charger and some pieces of metal and that might be a future video that i might do on this block it's something i've always fancied trying oddly enough and this would be a perfect candidate i've got some wire brushes i'm just gonna basically lightly take off this gunk there's head gasket material left over and it looks a bit scruffy and why i'm here i'll take it off now and it'll help with the appearance <music> So that is a very rough clean up, but that is looking a lot better. And we have some good news. So I thought this was weld. It was a big lump of metal and it was quite hard. I did try to chisel it off. It wasn't budging. I just thought this had been repaired, but it seems to be just rust that I built up. As you can see, we've got some pitting, but that is actually nice and flat. So I'm guessing this must have rusted lifted up and allowed water possibly to get into the threads which in turn rusted the actual threads in the bolt and traveled up the bolt and basically rusted the whole entire lot which means this actually might be a good block after all i'm still undecided on the fate of this block at the moment this really isn't a video about rebuilding this block this is more about honing the cylinders and what results you can expect to get. If you get into your block and you have gouges, which you can quite easily get your nail into and it actually makes an audible click sound, I would not recommend honing the cylinders. But when you get to that kind of degree, you really should be taking it to a machine shop. As with this stuck piston, even with something like this, possibly this should really go to a machine shop, if not just to be x-rayed and to be evaluated and decided if it's worth progressing on with. I had to switch over to the Milwaukee. I've got two batteries for the DeWalt drill. It was eating the batteries up before I could even charge them. So moved on to this guy and this did a fantastic job. So regarding the motion, I was kind of just counting. So it was one, two, three, four, five. I did that on all the cylinders and that way you get quite an even cross hatch. The mistake people make is put the horn tool in, put it in position and just pull the trigger and think, that just hitting that spot will basically get rid of that mark. It will, but then you will have an uneven cylinder and you definitely do not want that. The things I tend to horn are your smaller engines, nothing like this generally. It's very important to clean the pads after every pass. Any debris you pick up on the cylinder wall will end up on this pad. You do not want to wipe off the dirty oil, apply fresh oil, go back in for the second pass and just basically transfer all that dirt and grime onto the cylinder wall. You always prep before sanding. You would never just sand a dirty car because what you're doing basically is sanding in all the contaminants. Any foreign objects that is embedded into the pad would then be sanded back into the cylinder. So make sure that you clean your pads often. Make sure that you clean off all the dirty oil and apply fresh oil. Just take your time and it will work. Do plenty of research, there's plenty of videos on YouTube, so do go and check all them out and just kind of combine all the information together and do with it what you will. 
So I think we'll call it here on this one, guys. So like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below. I'll see you in the next one.